finally it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Attic, back with another review. This is a one family owned 66 Lincoln Continental Coupe. Yes, the coupes were introduced in 66. They did really well. And uh, this is a great example of one kind of a survivor car that's in very good condition, in my opinion. The current bid is at 6500 Ironically, that was about the selling price of this car back in good old 1960, late 65, 66. They actually know where this car was sold at, which is fantastic. Now, let's take a look at this one. Basically, um, th it's kind of rare to be able to know exactly where, but the receipts will show this. This coupe was purchased uh, late 65, which makes sense, on December 6, so 12 6 65, at Frontier Lincoln Mercury of Springfield, Pennsylvania. Uh, it is said to have been the family's daily driver until the mid-1980s, which is fantastic. Uh, we can see that this car has about 46,000 miles shown, which is great. I'm not the biggest fan of maroon. However, I think this car looks great, especially with the black interior that we're going to get to. I've talked about this before. 66 is my favorite out of the two. 66, 67 or so uh, similar. 68 also kind of falls into that as well with the similarities. But uh, in 66, you've got the star on the fender, and uh, you have a couple of less bars on that front grill, which is key. Uh, this does have a black vinyl roof that we'll take a look at. Uh, we can see the car does look complete. Um, the key, where the key is inserted for the trunk or deck lid, if you will, to open it, that is intact. Sometimes those are missing. But that's one thing I like about this car. When you look at it, it's, uh, it's of course, all there, which is great. The vinyl top shows some degradation, so... Uh, you will see that, and there are some minor rust bubbles on the exterior of the body, which is fine. That's definitely not a deal breaker. I think if you were to get this car repainted, you know, um, any competent body shop would be able to kind of get that uh, squared away. Uh, this is all pretty much standard stuff. There are a bunch of receipts that are going to show some work, if I recall correctly, but like ball joints, U joints, uh, things like that were done about eight years ago. We can see here in the uh, interior of the car, you've got the 66 interior, of course. I've talked a little bit about it. We'll see a few more photos, but I like the dash in 66. They're very similar to 67. However, there is this extra little space up here, which typically means that these dashes do not crack. They kind of extended that a little bit in 67, and uh, 67, you'll see more cracks. I do like the seats as well in 66 a little bit more. Uh, there are some additional safety changes and things, you know, till the you know closer to the end of the decade. So in '67, the seats do change a good bit, but other than the patterns, uh, from '61 to '66, for the most part, the seats are are similar, um, and they have this uh, stainless steel trim that kind of goes around the back of it, which I've always been a fan of. We can see, of course, the um, floor mats, as you would expect, if this was a driver, those are not factory correct, and that's no big deal. Uh, it does look like it has speed control, which is here. That would have been an option, uh, and that allows basically the, similar, the same thing as um, your uh, cruise control today. Uh, someone had mentioned before, I didn't point this out, the speedometer is very cool in 66 and up, uh, and it kind of changes color as it goes along. My friend Tony had a, a really nice coupe, and uh, it was neat riding in it. I mean, you could get that thing up to 85 miles an hour, and it just you're floating down the road, and you would see the speedometer, uh, which is horizontal, as they point out. Uh, it changes colors. Now, someone in the comment points out that for the most part, this car is factory correct. Of course, the air cleaner is not. Uh, whether this is your cup of tea or not, you could easily go to one of the Lincoln Parts suppliers and buy the correct air cleaner if that's something that you wanted to do. In 66, of course, the coil moves here much easier to change in service. Prior, it was up underneath the expansion tank, which was definitely annoying. We can see it has the single pot reservoir. Of course, in 67, it goes to the dual. And of course, this is an air conditioned car, as you would expect. Uh, and uh, it has the AC compressor right here. Still has the fan shroud. I think this is more of like a fiberglass material, um, kind of tight material, but that is intact and that's fantastic. Up underneath the car, we can see for the most part, in my opinion, it's very solid. 
it's clean overall for um, what you would expect, uh, especially being up north. Um, this car definitely looks like it was taken care of. We could see uh, bring a trailer breaks all this down. We've got the two door coupe with the 65A, uh, the Royal Maroon Metallic, black leather, of course. And the build date was November 13th of 65. And of course, they purchased it about a month later, uh, give or take. Uh, we could see here it has the original sales receipt. This stuff is very rare. Fantastic that they're including it. Uh, this gives us the intel on where it was purchased, and that's key because, as I mentioned in the past, a lot of these um, the records were destroyed and lost, from, you know, from Lincoln. So you can't just go out and get the report that a lot of people get for their um, cars, for their muscle cars and whatnot, because it just doesn't exist for those '60s Lincoln. So having something like this is very cool. Uh, certainly in, in my opinion, uh, there are, uh, I did not look at the video that they posted, but let's take a look now. If I, I did, I do believe, I don't know what happened there. Uh, I don't know why it's, yeah, they're doing something weird there. I can't watch this video, but I believe the. The, this is a longer video, um, and you'll be able to check that out um, by clicking it. For some reason, it's not letting me click onto it right now, but I believe it is a longer video based upon the comments in the uh, comment section. So what we can see here, again, a 66 coupe looks really nice. Uh, so there was a little bit of chatter in the comments about you know why, why did the coupes not take off as much, and they certainly sold well. I do believe this is my opinion. Uh, a lot of folks that you know want one of these Lincolns, they often want the four door because of the rear uh, hinged doors, aka suicide doors. But certainly there are you know these coupes. My buddy and I always joke, and Tony always says they're under rise, uh, which is kind of the little catchphrase that we have. But these coupes have been on the rise for sure. Uh, people do like them. Uh, this to me is a car that you wouldn't want to customize. Certainly. I mean, it's a car that you just get in and cruise, uh, and, and that's fantastic. So as we're going through the videos here uh, or the photos, rather, you'll see like for the most part, the bright work looks good. You've got all the letters for the continental, uh, scripting across the front. You've got the hood ornament and so on and so forth. We'll take a look here a little bit closer. Again, you've got, uh, I, I did a video on social media. You've got two or three less bars. I always forget, but 67, they kind of jumped that up a little bit. Now you've got some, a, a little bit of, of non-perfectness, if you will. In my 66 that I own, the bumpers were the same way. They kind of get this like kind of spider effect and you can kind of see they don't look perfect. You could certainly get out here and polish all this and make it look really nice. And it would be up to you if you wanted to spend the extra coin, which is not cheap to you know, have the bumpers removed or take them off. Shipping, of course, is not cheap. You know, getting them to a chromer and redoing it all, but the stuff is definitely expensive. Certainly, that's not what I would be worried about. I think, you know, these cars, like in this kind of driver condition, not perfect. I definitely like them in this condition, as I've said before. Now, again, you will see a little bit of bubbling, which they're clear on uh, here and here. Uh, and that's, you know, th that's something that you will see in these cars. And certainly again, any competent body shop. Now, certainly if this was all rusted out and, you know, this was all, you know, there, there was a lot more, uh, chunkiness to it, if you will, certainly that's when, you know, you start to get, you know, a little bit more suspect of, Hey, you know, how much rust is underneath this car. But certainly from what I see in these photos, it looks to be very, very nice. The vinyl top is not perfect. I had a vinyl top on my 67. I'm not a fan of them. Them, you can remove them, and as long as the there's there's no major damage underneath there, which I assume there's not, then you could just kind of leave it the normal non vinyl top. Now I will tell you, in my '67, uh, it was not perfect around the rear uh, window, and that's where like a lot of water would sit over the years and things like that. If this car was kept inside. You don't have to really worry about that, but uh, you know, if it's a vinyl top, I always want to kind of put my finger around that rear window and just make sure it's not crunchy underneath there. Again, you could get in here with some TLC and some nice um, 
uh, the quadruple ought or quadruple zero uh, steel wool and uh, some brasso polish or the like. And you could kind of polish all this stuff up, you know, if, if that's what you wanted to do. We can see the dash again, it's not cracked. And again, if you see one of these in person, you'll see that this little spacing in here. My buddy Tony and I have talked about this before. I, I, I really dig this. It just, I don't know, I, I like it. It seems like a better design. At 67, when this is extended, it's a little bit longer, of course, and you'll tend to see the crack in the dash right here. This is a very, very nice dash. No cracks from what we can see. Uh, this is the stainless trim that I talk about. Again, I like the seats a little bit more in 66. They do change in 67, kind of with some of the headrest type things that we start to see uh, coming in. Uh, we can see it has rear seat belts. Uh, I'm assuming based upon the stitching right here that these are the factory correct ones, which are certainly not cheap if you can even find them if you're looking to add them to your car. Uh, this is another cool thing uh, that people don't really talk about in the coupes. The seats fold forward, uh, which is nice because obviously you got to be able to get in and out. Uh, and you have the factory uh uh, cat, or excuse me, the factory floor mats there. Uh, we can see some discoloration here. Uh, that's, uh, you know, I would say that there's definitely some things in the interior that need to be done. Uh, certainly the trunk, uh, it looks better than a lot. Uh, the key thing here, I wouldn't even be concerned with this. Uh, I would say, look, looking underneath the deck lid, that's a key thing that you want to look at. Uh, engine bay looks like a driver, you know, it's been driven all these years. They don't have a super lot of miles on it, but you know, it just, you could clean it up if you wanted to. You've got the battery box in here, which is kind of rare. You don't always see that. So that's kind of cool to see that. Um, underneath the car, um, you can, if you're looking to purchase this car, you could take a look at it. Um, I think it looks pretty good overall. You know, it's got, you know, no excessive amount of undercoating. The, the coloration and things like that, it all looks as it should. Uh, these cars do tend to leak, so they're not going to be perfectly clean underneath. But this car is cleaner than most that I've seen. And again, you can kind of go through some of these receipts and um, see what was spent. Uh, definitely some uh, several hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars on a couple of them. Uh, again, the chatter um, is normal chatter in the comments, nothing crazy. But uh, what do you think of this car? What do you think it's going to go for? I mean, I think personally it's going to hit 25000 which is ironic because I just did a sedan that didn't hit 20000 uh, And it had 20000 in receipts. So you can kind of see that it's hard to gauge this stuff sometimes. In my opinion, this is a car that someone can get in and cruise and drive and enjoy Maybe customize it, dare I say, if that's what they want to do. That's their car, but it's currently at $6,500. I'm ODB. Stay on the rise, everyone. Thank you.